I recently posted a chord melody arrangement and harmonic analysis of tune-up by Miles Davis. Well, it so happens that John Coltrane was a saxophonist on the uh, recording of that tune. About a decade later, he took this interesting 16 measure progression and rewrote it using a harmonic innovation, which has since become known among jazz musicians as Coltrane Changes. In today's lesson, not only am I going to show you the procedure Coltrane employed to write Countdown, but I am also going to teach you a chord melody arrangement of it. Let me play and improvise over it first so you can get an idea of what I am going to teach you next. and I want to welcome you to the Jazz Guitar Channel where I bring you weekly lessons on everything related to the art of playing jazz guitar. We can analyze the regular tune-up chord progression as being entirely in the key of D major with borrowed major seven chords from parallel minor tonalities. And this is what is known as modal interchange. And if you want to understand it in more detail, as well as learn the chord melody to tune up, please check out my recent video where I also analyze that piece. The other option is to analyze it as transitional modulations through three key centers, which is what I am going to do in this instance. So in a nutshell, tune up consists of three two five ones descending in major seconds. We first have four measures with a 2-5-1 in D major 7. Next four measures with a 2-5-1 in C major 7. And another four measures with a 2-5-1 in B flat major 7. Listen to the major seven chords here. What we see here is the big picture, the three main tonal components of tune-up. Interestingly enough, Coltrane then inserted a series of microtonalities within each one of these initial three main tonalities. To understand how he did this, let's take a look at the first four measures of Countdown. Notice that within these four measures, we again see three different major seven chords. Let's isolate these major seven chords. This progression now depicts what is known as the descending cycle of major thirds. In it, any chord will progress through two consecutive keys before arriving back at the beginning, which in this case is the key of D. Now, let's take this a step further by backtracking and adding the dominant of each major seven chord, that is the five seven of each major seven chord or tonic center in this case. 
Notice that each dominant now resolves a perfect fifth down to each new major seventh chord. The dominants now act as chords to smoothly transition and thus modulate between each tonal center. And if we look carefully, what we end up with here is the basic foundation for giant steps. Listen to the progression. Now, if you're still wondering how Train took this progression to replace the four initial measures of tune-up, let's take a further look. Here we have the 2-5-1 in D that tune-up starts out with. Since the cycle of descending major thirds always progresses through two consecutive major seven chords before arriving again at the initial one, we can deduct that any four measure 251 can be reharmonized using this principle in conjunction with each major seventh's dominant. Now there is one final modification needed before everything here matches the countdown progression. The first chord should be an E minor 7. And this is the 2 minor 7 of the current key and we can actually substitute the first major 7 chord in the cycle of descending major thirds for any other related diatonic chord in the key and the progression and it will still work as intended. So here we have the entire countdown progression where we can see the original three tonalities from tune-up consisting of four measure segments. This is the macro tonal view. Within each set of four measures, we now have the micro tonal view consisting of the cold train changes. And with that understanding for those three or four players that are still with me, uh, let me now show you how to play the chord melody as well as what scales you can use to improvise over the changes. As usual, I've prepared a downloadable study package featuring PDFs including regular notation and tab for the chord melody, two MP3s, that is one of the arrangement and one with a backing track, and also a band and a box file for those that have the software. And you can check it out at jazzguitar.richiezellen.com. And here are the first four measures and take a look at the fingering that I'm using because we're going to place a chord underneath each finger. So we're starting out with jump up here with our pinky and then And here are the chords. Mm -hmm. 